Welcome guys to another episode. Today we're going to take a closer look at microchip technology. The company recently reported earnings and we have an amazing co-host to kind of take us through this earnings. Good morning, Billy. How's it going? Good morning. It's going well. Thanks, Jose. So, so Billy, this is going to be a pretty interesting semiconductor stock um, because it's one of the few that are actually up in, in, in forms of revenue. Well, most of, I want to say most of the semiconductor companies that we know and love are probably down both year over year and sequentially. We can see for microchip technology, revenue was actually up 21% year over year. I'll let you kind of tell us, the viewers, what's happening here with the earnings. So I'll send it your way. Yeah, microchip. So full disclosure, I recently bought uh, more shares of this company, but it dipped on earnings a little bit and I'm um, looking to buy more. Um, microchip, a uh, great company. They make uh, a lot of proprietary microcontrollers and analogs, uh, analog chips and field programmable gate arrays. And then they have a little bit of silicon carbide exposure as well. A lot of trailing edge, um, very much centered on industrial chips and auto chips and sort of the good part of the data center, which has been fairly resilient. Um, that being said, there's a few wrinkles that investors seem to glom onto, but I think the, the positives are way outweigh the negatives with this company. Um, and it trades at a very reasonable valuation. So two earnings. Um, so they they just reported their fiscal fourth quarter. Their fourth quarter is in March. Um, so ended their fiscal twenty three. Revenue was two point two three million. Was up over twenty one percent. That beat uh, estimates. And their adjusted EPS was up twenty one and a half percent. Also beating estimates. Um, they guided for another one to four percent sequential growth. Um, but uh, basically similar EPS because they estimate paying a little bit higher tax rate uh, in the current quarter. Um, so you think, and there, that that guidance for the next quarter was a little bit above estimates too, but the stock went down a little bit after earnings, which might be a bit confusing. Um, they did have some commentary that some customers are requesting pushouts of delivery of products um, and microchip is uh, complying with those requests from some customers, I want to reiterate some customers, and building and keeping some of that inventory on its own balance sheet. So I think that freaked some um, investors out and stock went down a little bit after earnings, although it's pretty much back to where it was right now. Um, Discover the world of semiconductors without getting lost in the technical jargon. My new membership offers a perfect balance for investors looking to understand this exciting market. Using my electrical engineering knowledge and experience, I will release weekly exclusive videos ranging from quick 5-minute 101s to in-depth analysis, covering not just popular chip stocks, but aiming to explore every public semiconductor. Plus, join the private community of like-minded investors. Finally, I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. And check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. However, management says, you know, a lot of these orders, this is one of the companies that had a shortage during the um, last year. And... Um, a lot of its backlog is non-cancelable. So um, Microchip said it's willing to sort of be flexible on its contracts with customers on the timing of delivery, but not on canceling those orders. So those chips will likely get sold at some point. Um, management also said like, yeah, we're seeing some customers push, want to push out, but then Late last year, we had some other customers want to push out, and now they're trying to pull back in. So it's a very strange market where I think the customers are getting nervous because of the macro and maybe are not sure of their sales coming up. And so they kind of want to see if they can defer some of the buying of microchips, uh, semiconductors. 
But this really seems around the edges. I mean, their backlog, <clears throat> I think, is still larger than last year's full year revenue. And management expects their days of inventory to come down in the current quarter after it went up last quarter. So I think this is a relatively small hiccup and isn't really going to affect things too much in the big picture. Management also said, even in a recessionary, like big semiconductor downturn scenario, which it does not foresee, it sees its adjusted operating margins above 40, above 40%. So that's very profitable. Uh, and operating margins were 47.6 last quarter. Um, here's the thing that makes me very bullish about microchip. Uh, in the end of 2021, they identified six megatrends that they were targeting with their R&D <clears throat> and their production. Uh, Microchip has some internal production and then some they outsource to foundries. It's sort of like a 60-40 model or something like that. Um, those were 5G, data center, Internet of Things, electric vehicles, um, sustainable infrastructure, and autonomous uh, vehicles. The company noted that since 2021, so basically two years since they identified those, revenue from those mega trends has been double that of the overall company. And the proportion of revenue that comes from these mega trends um, sectors has risen from 34% to 45% of revenue. So that really got my ears up because I've had success in the past when a company has sort of a smaller but high growth segment. And then as that segment grows larger and larger, it makes up a bigger proportion of the business, which means the overall company growth rate can sort of sustain or even accelerate. Now, I don't expect Microchip to accelerate off of 21% growth, but I still think it can be high single digit, low double digit growth for a number of years. And the stock is not expensive. It trades around 12 times trailing adjusted earnings, which is, I think, very cheap if the company can pull that off. And there's even uh, more good news because the company has just achieved its leverage target. Um, it's now paid off its debt to below 1.5 times adjusted EBITDA. So for those who haven't seen our earlier profiles on Microchip, it made a massive acquisition of a company called MicroSemi back in um, 2018. And it took on, I think over $8 billion of debt or something to um, buy this company. It was essentially like doubling the size of the company. And it's used most of its free cash flow to pay that, that debt down for the last five years. And the company just got to its target um, for leverage after four years of deleveraging. So that means that it's now go Microchip's now going to increase, steadily increase the proportion of its free cash flow that goes to shareholders every quarter. So it's always paid a dividend through that. But um, last quarter, and then it began to repurchase some stock um, I think in the last year as it sort of made progress. So last quarter it paid 62.5% of free cash flow to its shareholders. And it had been increasing that proportion by about two and a half percentage points every quarter. But now that it's at its um, leverage target, it's going to increase that 500 basis points each quarter. So next quarter is going to be 67.5, then 72.5, then 77.5 until it gets to 100% of free cash flow going to shareholders in dividends or repurchases in about seven quarters. So not only do you have a pretty low valuation, but the company is about to return more of its cash to shareholders in the next two years. And the company has been raising its dividend pretty much on a quarterly basis. Um, it just raised its dividend 7% again quarter over quarter, I think it's the dividends up like 30 something percent year over year, and now yields 2.1%. So it's not a bad yield, um, solid growth, low valuation. It's just a, a real solid setup, I think. And um, 
obviously investors are sort of worried about since this company hasn't had a downturn like a lot of its peers a lot i think a lot of investors are wondering if it's going to have one but it's exposed to a lot of fairly resilient markets in aerospace and defense um you know, uh, clean energy infrastructure. Uh, it's got, I think, 17 or 18% auto exposure. It's got a little bit of that silicon carbide that we've talked about um, in the past. So I think it's going to be fairly steady. And uh, the conservative investor in me really likes this company a lot. And one thing before I go, if we can go to the next slide. So the chairman of microchip since 1993, I believe, since 1990, actually. Uh, he used to, he was CEO, and then he recently became chairman and hired his successor. His name is Steve Sangi. He just came out with a book um, called Up and to the Right. It's basically the story of how he made microchip into what it was. It was a near bankrupt startup that was like going away <laughs> in the early nineties. And basically he was hired, uh, this guy used to work at Intel and he was hired and came in and developed a plan and turned it around. And it went from a near bankrupt micro cap to a 40 something billion dollar company <laughs> today. And you can get the full story. Uh, the book, I just ordered a copy of the book actually. Uh, it's called up and to the right. And you can see the long-term track record there on the upper left um, with uh, microchips long-term revenue. The Navy Blue is microcontroller revenue. That was its initial core product. The yellow is analog chips, which has grown nicely in the last 10 years. And then other chips are in green. I think that's sort of new, like FPGAs, silicon carbide. Uh, but you can see the long-term track record and you can see the margin expansion through the cycles on the lower left there. Mm -hmm. So I really like this company. Um, Sangi's still involved as chairman. I think he's involved in capital allocation decisions. Uh, he still appears on the conference call with the new CEO, um, Ganesh Murthy. And uh, yeah, like this company a lot. I like its current valuation. And I'd recommend people look into it. Definitely, Billy. I mean, this is one that I always want to look into and, and get more information um, because it is growing at an impressive rate. I think microcontrollers are an amazing market. Um, yeah. As an electrical engineer, when you kind of graduate courses, you tend to, or I, I don't know, it, for all engineers, I believe, when you graduate your senior year, you tend to do a senior project. Most senior projects that I always seen get used by uh, some form of microcontroller. The most common is the Arduino, um, or, or Arduino Uno that gets used in, in a lot of these products. And microchips uh, microchips chips are actually used in the Arduino Uno. Um, and I know for the past few for the past year or so, um, these products have been overselling. They've been like GPUs where they you you have to pay a premium price because mm. people are just buying on them, reselling them because of the kind of huge demand and low supply at the moment. And it's pretty interesting how their um, micro micro controllers continue to grow. Um, I, I know you mentioned, Billy, that this company was seeing a bit of a, uh, maybe their inventory might be building up as maybe certain customers are pushing those deadlines a little bit more. The great thing that I hear from management is they mentioned that their products, unlike other technology, where they kind of lose their purpose to some extent it, over time, microcontrollers tend to kind of hold their timely value um, so even if they get pushed back a few quarters, they are not worried that these products are going to become obsolete uh, of any sort. So I think that's a great news. Uh, and I also did see that the company, um, they might have kind of slowed down a little bit on some of their um, capital expenditure um, mm -hmm. this quarter, this year, it seems. Um, but again, it, it's just kind of going with the overall macroeconomics and that should kind of uh, pick up over time. So. The book seems pretty interesting, Billy. One I'll definitely kind of have to pick up to read. Um, the other thing, oh, I did have another highlight here from their earnings call. Uh, they kind of talked about Gardner and how they uh, kind of showcased this pretty cool information. Um, and for microcontroller mix signal, uh, 
three years ago, they were about 16.5% away from the number one spot. Now they're like 1.4%, I believe, from the number one spot in just three mm-hmm. years. Uh, so this is definitely become, I, I think if they keep moving, they're going to be one of the, the leader um, in the microcontroller space. So uh, pretty interesting one with great growth opportunity. And like you mentioned, Billy, I can't believe on in, in forms of valuation. Uh, I, I think it's just such a boring company and no one really thinks about microcontrollers uh, mm-hmm. to that extent. But like you mentioned, they are in great aerospace and defense. Um, I, I mean, when I worked in GZ, microcontrollers were something that was used almost in every project. Uh, so it, it, it's pretty cool, the the aspects of, of this market. Um, Billy, before we close out uh, this topic, any, any final thoughts? Not really. You said it very well. Um, th- their markets, uh, I think they only said like 14% of their revenue is exposed to sort of the low end consumer electronics that have been in that are really cyclical or in a recession right now, like 86% is mostly in the sort of like industrial auto, more consistent, the good part of data centers, um, where their, their switch, their switch chips, um, I think, um, are used in AI data centers as well. So, um, they got, they have these, their core workhorse products, and then they have some interesting exposure to AI with a little bit of the revenue and a little bit of silicon carbide as well, which is supposed to be a high growth market. So um, this is one I think you can buy and hold for the long term. Uh, just continue to add to it on dips. It's just a really well, well-managed company. And I'm hoping to uncover some of the secrets behind that success in, when I read the book. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Thank you for that, Billy. And I think this is a great way to end this segment.